In this lecture, we are going to see the long run production function. Earlier, in the previous lecture, we have seen a short run production function. We have also seen the difference between long run and short run, where we mentioned that the short run is a period of time during which you cannot change at least one factor of production. And the long run is a period of time during which you can change all the factors of production. So, we have seen the short run production function represented Q as a function of labor and capital constant. And uh, so, this is what we have seen. And the long run production function, we represent Q as a function of L and K. So, where both are variable, that is, if you want to increase or decrease the quantity of Q, that is output, then you can increase or decrease both labor and capital. So, long run refers to a period of time during that time period, the quantities of all factors of production can be changed. In the long run, all factors of production are variable factors. This is what we have seen already. Now, we proceed further. We conceive a production function where Q, the output is constant and that constant output can be produced using different combinations of capital and labor. We can call this function as an isoquent. So, isoquent is a production function where Q is constant whereas L and K are, are variable. So, iso means same, quantity, quant means quantity. So, this isoquant means the same quantity of output that is produced with the different combinations of labor and capital. So, isoquent represents the combinations of labor and capital that give the same level of output. This is similar to an indifference curve you would have studied in a few chapters earlier, where indifference curve gives different combinations of two commodities that gives the same level of satisfaction. So, similarly here different combinations of two factors of production that give the same level of output. So, if you remember what is an isoquent, then uh, what is an indifference curve, then you can easily understand the isoquent as well. So, indifference curve is used in the context of consumption and derivation of a demand curve, whereas isoquent is used in the context of discussion of public uh, production function. So, this is the first part of it. Then, uh, this is how an isoquent will be. So, I have given for instance IQ1, which is, uh, which is 10 units of production. So, I represent labor along the x-axis and capital along the y-axis. So, 10 units of capital and 5 units of labor producing 10 units of output. The same 10 units of output can also be produced by using 5 units of capital and 15 units of labor. So, this is an isoquent because both at A and C, we are producing the same level of output, but different combinations of capital and labor. Here, the combination is 10 capital and 5 labor, whereas at C, the combination is 5 capital and 15 labor. Take this case of B, which is using 10 capital and 15 labor, of course, obviously greater than this combination or greater than this combination. So, the total output is also higher. So, B is on a higher isoquent. So, higher the level of isoquent, higher will be the level of output. So, just like an indifference curve, all the properties of indifference curve we have seen, the same properties are also common for uh, the isoquent. That is, farther an isoquent is from the origin, the greater the level of output. That is, this is the origin. If you go this way, first is 10 units of output, the next one is 20 units of output. That is, farther the isoquent, higher the level of output. Isoquents do not cross each other. If they cross each other, then it becomes very illogical. And isoquents also slope downwards from left to right. So, these are all the common properties of isoquent and uh, the same as the properties of an indifference curve. The same logic applies here too. 
So if you can remember the properties of an indifference curve, then understanding the properties of an isoquant is not difficult. Suppose I assume that uh, an, this indifference curve cuts here. That means this particular combination of capital and labor, it can be used to produce 10 units as well as 20 units. How is it possible? When there is a particular combination of capital and labor, then it can give only one level of output. It cannot give two different levels of output. Therefore, the isoquents cannot cut each other. So this is the first point that, and it slopes downwards because as you reduce capital, then you should increase labor to maintain the production. Compare A to C. Actually, we have reduced capital by 5 units. In A, capital used is 10. In C, capital used is 5. So you are reducing capital. But you want the same level of production. That is, you want to produce the same 10 units of output. So when you reduce capital to maintain the production at the same level, then you should obviously increase the other factor of production, that is labor here. So you will have to increase labor from 5 to 15 and then it goes up to uh, C. So where C is also 10 units of output. That's why the isoquent slope downwards from left to right because as you reduce one factor of production, you should increase the other factor of production in order to maintain the level of output at 10. So this is what we understand an isoquent is. Next is the slope of an isoquent. The slope of an isoquent can be a straight line. We have seen earlier a, a curvilinear line. We will see that later. But it, an isoquent can be a straight line provided the two factors of production are perfect substitutes. That is, if I reduce one unit of capital and increase one unit of labor, then at every point I will be able to do the same and maintain the same level of production. So an isoquent is a downward sloping straight line if the factors of production are perfect substitutes. This is important. Of course, it cannot happen, but this is an extreme case. There are certain technologies where the factors of production cannot be substituted. They have to be used in a particular proportion. For example, they have to be used in equal uh, ratios. That is, at point A, two units of capital and two units of labor will have to be used. If you change this ratio, then nothing can be produced. For instance, if you want to reduce capital by one unit, you cannot increase labor by one unit and do the same production. That is not possible because the technology does not allow that. So uh, either you should produce at point A or you should produce at point B. In other words, the isoquent will be only a specific point on the space, whereas it cannot be a line like this or a line like this. It can only be a specific point. So when an isoquent can be a specific point, only when the factors of production have to be combined in a fixed proportion. That is, they cannot be substituted against each other. They have to be used in a particular proportion. So it is not a line. So this is called a fixed proportion uh, production function. And to represent a fixed proportion production function, then the isoquent will be only a point. Of course, you have a curvilinear uh, isoquent as I have shown in the previous slide, where typically an isoquent is convex to the origin, uh, but it shows that the substitutability between K and L is within A and B and the ratio is changing. That is, an isoquent cannot be a very large line. It can be a very small line. That is, the isoquent is only within A and B. It cannot be extended beyond B or it cannot be extended beyond A. So, it is. it has got its own limitations. That is why I say it is within the limits of A and B. And the ratio in which it can be substituted, that is the ratio of substitution of capital for labor or labor for capital, that is also changing at each point here. That I will show in the next slide. But all that I am trying to tell you is the substitutability between capital and labor will be changing along an curvilinear isoquent. That is an isoquent when it is curvilinear, when it is a curve, 
then the ratio at which capital can be substituted for labor will be changing at each of these points that is first one second a curvilinear uh, isoquant is actually within limits it cannot be extended beyond a particular level so this is uh, these are the three forms in which an isoquant can exist then we are coming to the slope of an isoquant the slope of an isoquant shows the rate at which capital can be substituted by labor that is here i am reducing at point a i am reducing capital by one unit and i am increasing labor by one unit that is i am substituting one unit of capital by one unit of labor this is the ratio so the change in capital divided by change in labor which is 1 by 1 so it is actually this is negative 1 so it is also negative this ratio is called marginal rate of technical substitution what is this ratio this ratio shows the rate at which capital can be substituted by labor so i call it as marginal rate of technical substitution labor for capital that is i am substituting labor for capital that is reducing capital and increasing labor so that can be written as change in capital divided by change in labor or in a mathematical notation it is dk by dl now this marginal rate of substitution it is 1 here at point a whereas here it is 1 is to 4 that is minus 0.25 so here the diminishing marginal rate of substitution here it is 1 here it is point, uh, 0.25 which means the marginal rate of technical substitution it declines as we move from uh, top to bottom that is from left to right then there is a diminishing marginal rate of substitution this is an important point you will have to remember that's why i marked it as important that is diminishing marginal rate of substitution as we move from left to right why it is diminishing why here we have the same one unit of capital can be replaced by one unit of labor here one unit of capital can be replaced by only four units of labor why this is the case this is the case because here we have more amount of capital and less amount of labor therefore whichever is less that is this capital this labor is less here so at this point there is lower amount of labor therefore the productivity of labor will be higher here the capital is less therefore the productivity of capital is less so at point a we have more capital in other words less productivity for capital we have less labor in other words more productivity for labor so this is the ratio here what happens we have more amount of labor but less amount of capital so the productivity of capital is higher here and productivity of labor is lower therefore for every unit we need more amount of labor so this is the reason behind the marginal rate of technical substitution declining as we move along an isoquant from left to right so this is a very important point you will have to remember that is marginal rate of substitution that is the rate at which capital can be replaced by labor will be declining as we move from left to right along an isoquant so these are all the initial uh, ideas about the long run production function this particular point that i made at the last you should remember very clearly what is that point that i made at point a we have more labor i put it at point a we have more more capital so when capital is more what does it mean the productivity is less productivity is less at the same time we have less labor we have less labor that means labor is a very low ratio whereas the productivity of labor is more 
So here the productivity of labor is more, productivity of capital is less. Therefore, we need less amount of labor for substituting a particular amount of capital. Here what happens? Availability of capital is less, but availability of labor is more. So that is why here the productivity of labor is less and productivity of capital is more. So in order to substitute higher pro productive capital, we need more amount of labor. So that is why the marginal rate of substitution here declines. So this is the point that you will have to uh, carefully bear in mind, understand the reason behind this. So next we will see about the elasticity of substitution in our next lecture. Okay, thank you.